Welcome to Whips in the Dungeon. I'm Dex and tonight we're gonna, actually this is gonna be a fairly long video. I'm gonna challenge you to stay tuned all the way to the end of it. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave an appropriate comment as that, that really helps the channel out. It helps the channel more than you could know. Uh, tonight we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about breaking in a whip with a focus on breaking in a dungeon whip and everybody's gonna break their whips in a little differently, but I'm gonna talk about how I break my whips in. As most of you know, this past year, I started a two whip, or match set of whips journey, throwing two-handed, and it's been quite an adventure, but as a result, I've had to acquire a number of match sets. So how do I break in uh, a whip in general? Also, how do I break in a match set? There's, a, there's some subtle differences so tonight we're going to show you three sets of whips that we've been working on breaking in. Uh, I'm going to throw them using four or five different angles so you can get different camera angles on these whips as I'm throwing them and they're breaking in and you can see how the thong is reacting, uh, how the rollout is, uh, at what point I'm at. I'll give you some pointers on how I feel about a particular set of whips. Let me give you a close-up real quick of these whips. The first is a, a match set of three-foot snake whips uh, from Johnny Ogren at Witchcraft Whips. We're gonna throw those a bit. I've been throwing the, breaking those in a while. Uh, this is a match set of four-foot bull whips from Peter Jack, and he's in his 47th year of plaiting, and he plaited the number 47 I end the handle of both of these whips to commemorate his 47th year of plaiting. Peter is my whip man. I buy whips from a lot of other whip uh, makers, but I consider Peter uh, my whip man. And then this really nice set of four foot bull whips from Blake Gorey at Smoky Mountain Whips. And he did them uh, with his Pythos design, which at this particular whip, it's supposed to signify a black king cobra eating uh, a diamondback rattlesnake, which is the handle. So this set of whips is still really stiff, but I'm gonna talk some about them. I'm gonna throw some of them. So if you wanna see all six of these whips in action, then you're just gonna to have to stay to the end. So we're gonna start with these snake whips, okay? Uh, my preference in dungeon play when I'm throwing a dungeon set is to start uh, after the warm-up, to start with a set of snakes and then progress to bull whips. Okay, so a match set. If I was just going to sport crack and I was just going to break these in, I might go to the park and I might just do a million cattlemen's cracks with these until I finally have them broken in. But what I want to do when I break them in is I want to throw them the way I throw in the dungeon and I want to throw them with control and I want the whip to develop a rollout so that it can end on target with a puff. I'm not worried about cracking the whip. I want it to be have good enough rollout that it can roll out accurately and end in a puff. So I'm going to throw these two-handed. Let's start with the t-shirt. So, you know, I've been throwing these for maybe three weeks. I've thrown them for one, one night in the dungeon. I threw uh, seven scenes, so they've had seven scenes so far. Uh, and then a lot of me throwing at targets at home. Uh, how do I know when a whip is broken into the point that I could throw in the dungeon? When I could put it on target, with control and have it end in a control puff. I'm not worried about cracking it. Uh, I'm not worried about could I do an intense heavy SM scene with it. I'm worried about control and finesse. Can I put it on target with control in a control puff? And when the answer to that ends up being yes, then that whip for me is ready to go in the dungeon and be played with, even though I might not be 100% happy with it, and it may not be where I want it to end up. 
at least that's where it can start my journey with me as far as my leather journey goes and, and being a dungeon whip. So right now I'm able to throw these snakes with a fairly fair amount of control and have them end on target. So I took them in the dungeon and I've been throwing them in the dungeon. Is the rollout where I want it to be? No, but I've only been throwing them for three weeks. These whips are gonna to continue to get better. They're phenomenal as far as I'm concerned. They're phenomenal. You can see when I throw directly at the camera and you can imagine standing for me. These are gonna land on target. So I'm, I'm really happy with the witchcraft whips. Uh, they're breaking in fine. You can kind of get an idea of what this rollout's like already. Uh, so all of these techniques that you do, uh, and two-handed, I would do static throws and come over the shoulder. I wouldn't be able to do a bow and arrow two-handed. I would only be able to do that one-handed. So I don't practice with the bow and arrow two-handed, only one-handed. But the static throws, you can do two-handed. So anything you can do in the dungeon with your match set, you should be doing in practice as you're breaking them in. Okay, so mostly I'm just doing the Ford figure eight, only I'm doing it alternating it with both hands. Uh, you can do, as long as you can keep from tangling your crackers, you can do together timing. Uh, I seem to fall into staggered timing better, more easily. Uh, for some reason, I just, I struggle with distributed timing. I don't find that rhythm as easily, okay? Uh, but that's the snake whips. So now let's look at these Peter Jack bull whips. I've been, I've had these the longest, and so these are the most broken in. Uh, you can just look at the profile and tell that that whip has had more breaking in. I'll show you the profile on the Smoky Mountain Whip, which I've only had about three weeks. I got it about the same time I did the Witchcraft Whips from, uh, from Sweden. So the frequency is a little slower with a four foot bull whip than with the three foot snake. You can slow these down and control them. Uh, they're breaking in nicely. They end on target. I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not done breaking them in, uh, but I'm, my prediction is by weekend of wickedness in July, uh, these, these will be well broken in and ready to go. Uh, right now though, I'm throwing with them in local dungeons and local dungeon parties and having a great time. Peter makes a great whip. All of his whips have really good rollout, natural rollout when they break in. And these are just phenomenal. They're, they're, they're black and white kangaroo. So just throwing it with a control puff, not trying to kill anybody, not trying to crack the whip. The whip will learn to crack itself naturally uh, if you can learn to finesse it and throw a control puff. And a control puff is, is really honestly where you're gonna start with in dungeon play. So do I wanna know if the, crit, the whip can crack? Okay, yeah, it can crack. Okay, but I'm not gonna play with somebody like that in dungeon play. I'm gonna play with someone with a control puff. So that's where I want this whip to be. I wanna break it in using breaking it in the way that I would use it when I throw it in the dungeon. Okay. And I've got one cracker that's kind of come unfurled on me. So I've got one cracker that's more like a tassel cracker and one cracker that's a lady salad cracker. Uh, that wasn't intentional, that just happened. Sometimes that happens. Okay. 
and I'm going to throw out the camera for you for a little bit so you can see the Peter Jackson action. This particular build uh, is a Peter Jack target whip build, not his Latigo Doggo. I like both of those builds. So this build has a real light shot load in it, and the rollout's getting much, much better. Okay, so let's move on to the Smoky Mountain Whip. These are fantastic looking whips. You can already tell though, this whip is still very stiff. It's not broken in yet. But, can I throw it in dungeon play? Well, let's see what my criteria was I told you about. If I can control this whip and feather it, well, I can certainly do that one-handed. I'm not quite as good with my left hand because my left hand is still learning. Okay, but I can, I can feather that whip left-handed. Okay, and I throw it two-handed. Okay, I can do that. So with this whip, with about three weeks of breaking in, I felt like it was ready to audition it in the dungeon. I threw it last Saturday night. Like I said, I, I got lucky and did seven scenes, two of which were planned. The other five, I would say, were more like pickup. Uh, well, there, everyone was on my play card before the dungeon party started, but uh, it was a little more like a pickup pick up play. Okay, so these are, these are breaking in. And uh, out of the three sets that we've looked at, these are gonna take the longest to break in. Uh, it's a light shot load, two belly build, and they're phenomenal whips. They already have phenomenal control. The rollout is what I, I really like, a whip that has really good natural rollout that flows like a ripple on a pond, a still pond that finishes and ends on target. Uh, and But these just don't have that good a rollout yet. But the rollout will improve. As the whip breaks in, this rollout is gonna improve. Okay, so these are, I'm excited about these whips. And I'm gonna throw, 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 throw these whips until these get broken in and I'm really happy with them. This rollout's just, you know, it's just not, it doesn't flow like a ripple on a pond yet, but I'm confident it will. The build's very accurate and, uh, and it finishes on target. So that's, that's like 90% of what you want in the dungeon. You don't want to throw a whip out and target it and have it end up six inches to the right or end up high or end up low. You want it to end up where you point it. Now, I like it to flow and have nice rollout and end up uh, where it finishes. And somehow these make it there, they get there, uh, but they don't have the rollout yet that I'm really looking for. So I'm really looking to break them in more and enjoy the, uh, uh, the experience of having them learn how I throw. So that's another important tip, I think, is you want to break the whip in the way that you normally throw in the dungeon, okay? Like I said, I could take these whips to the park and I could do 500 cattlemen's cracks with them and that would slowly break them in. But I'm not doing 500 cattlemen's cracks in the dungeon when I throw with them I'm throwing just, uh, I mean, if you broke it down into a single throw, you could call that just an overhand or a flick, okay? Uh, but I'm, that's what I'm throwing in the dungeon, and I'm throwing it with control and with finesse and with that control puff, and I'm not focused on cracking, not crack, crack, crack. Crack when the music says crack. Uh, if the music's not saying crack, don't crack. So, for example, if Ramstein's playing and the music's screaming crack every fourth beat, maybe I'll crack a lot. If 
Inya's playing or Secret Garden or something that's softer and the music says doesn't say crack, I might throw a whole scene and never crack. So learning this control puff, not only is it where it should be at when you're breaking the whip in, but that's where it should be at when you're throwing in the dungeon, that nice control puff. I appreciate you staying with me to the end. I hope you enjoyed seeing all three match sets in action. Uh, please leave some comments in the, down below and let me know what you think of these whips and how they're breaking in. As always, thanks for watching Whips in the Dungeon.